All right, today I'm going to do the uh, bevel drive case gasket leak on this 2003, I think it is, yeah, 2003 Kawasaki Concourse. This is the bevel drive case. And there's a gasket back there that holds the case uh, cover holds a drive cover to the engine block and as far as I can tell that's where it's leaking. Uh, unfortunately uh, the drivetrain has to come off and a few other bits around here to get this case out. So it's a big job and we start by taking the, the wheel off and uh, I have it on the center stand and somebody on the forum said if I take this bolt out right here the rear end will drop enough so that I don't have to take the muffler off in order to get the axle out so I'm gonna try that and see if it works because you have to drop that wheel to get it past this fender uh, I don't want to cut fenders all right be back in a minute okay that went well I took the uh, bottom linkage bolt out so I can drop the rear end and get the axle past the muffler uh, to keep both mufflers on that way. And I put the pin back in because I wasn't really sure about leaving that drive shaft hanging down like that. Um, I know on some bikes that's a that's a, a no no. So. Um, but the, the next thing is to get this drive shaft off. Uh, swing arm slash drive shaft. So that's next. Okay, I took the final drive off here. Just four nuts. And a lot of people would say, take that off. And when you take the rear wheel off all in one, um, which is maybe a good idea, but there's more than one way to do a thing. So anyway, that'll make the swing arm ready to, to come off of the drive shaft, which will be next. The final drive, when you remove it, will have this spring on the end, so be careful not to lose that, but this is how it goes on the end. Okay, I have the swing arm off. I took out the uh, pins. By the way, I'm using this climber manual for all these procedures and you'll, you'll need that. Um, so both swing arm pins out. Uh, the boot had to be unclamped. And of course I had to take out the uh, shock absorber because it goes right through the swing arm. And then you pull it all back and it leaves this naked drive shaft, which I have suspended. And uh, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the camera on a tripod so I can film the procedure with this spring-loaded pin that's apparently in this hole. And when pressed down, it releases the drive shaft from these splines. So back in a minute. Okay, let's see if we can lose that pin. I have this little Allen wrench here. Um, if it pops out, maybe we'll all see it happen. There, I felt it go in. There, there it is. See it? The pin is right there. So, I didn't lose it. And the drive shaft is off. And of course, to take it out, use a magnet. And there it is. Now the spring itself is a coil of spring steel inside of here. It goes all the way around. And you're not likely to use it. It's not like a tiny spring. You're, you're more likely to lose the pin. The spring is uh, pretty substantial and it's inside of here. And that's actually very hard to lose. 
Okay, according to the book, the next thing I take off is this shift pedal bracket. So obviously this shifter and linkage will come off as well. Looks like before I can get this shift lever bracket off, I'll have to remove the clutch slave cylinder. Okay, I uh, dismounted the slave cylinder and as long as nobody squeezes the clutch, that piston should stay in there. Um, the bolts have red Loctite on them, so they're gonna come out kind of hard. A little bit of heat would have been wise, but I wasn't really sure about cooking this plastic spacer or that seal, even though I am gonna replace that seal. And this rod is supposed to come out um, for taking the uh, bevel gear case off. They want the rod out so you don't damage it. This uh, clutch rod. There we go. Now I can push the slave cylinder aside and get the shift lever bracket off. Okay, with those two items removed, I'm going to unplug the uh, wiring harness at this point and down in there and move this wire. That's the uh, neutral switch and oil pressure. Okay, we're pretty close to having access to the bevel gear case. Um, still have to take off the water pump. Uh, I have drained the coolant, which comes out, there's a bolt behind here, and I have drained the engine oil too. Okay, the water pump is off. First you take the cover off, then you take the hoses off, then you pull it out and replace the O-ring. So I think everything is ready to try to pull the case mounting bolts and take this entire unit off. Okay, I got the bevel drive off. Here's the bad gasket that I'm going to replace. Uh, I've been told that this spring can pop off if you're not careful. Uh, mine stayed on and that's how it's supposed to look. Um, this is the bevel drive. So next thing will be to uh, dress the new metal gasket. Okay, I've cleaned the surface well and I've moved everything out of the way because to get this uh, bevel gear drive in all in one move with a little bit of Yama bond on the metal gasket is kind of a tricky move. Um, but I'll be back in a minute. Okay, the case is on. I've torqued uh, the nine bolts and I've tapped in the two oil seals, the shifter and the clutch rod seal. Um, it's time to put on the water pump. And my old one had this little bit of play. I realized, so I got a new one. So that's a little un unintended expense. Uh, that'll go on next. Okay, at this point I have the water pump on, the shift bracket, the clutch cylinder, uh, my wires routed, and everything's ready to go for uh, oil refill, coolant refill. Obviously I still need to put the drivetrain back on, but I'm going to end the video here. I think, uh, I hope these pictures will, will help you uh, get to that bevel case gasket. All right. Talk to you later.